you're going to be in the Los Angeles area, come out and join us in the studio for an upcoming game day taping. Head to lolesports.com, click on the tickets link, and start planning your trip to the LCS today. All right, and now to get us pumped up for our next match, let's take a look at the last time teammate and Team Impulse met back in week two. Focus without any magic resistance. That's going to be the Gnar ultimate into the tidal wave. Wait for the turn. Wait for the Beautiful turn. ultimate. Where is the shockwave? It's only one person. There it is. Yeah, baby. That's all they were looking for all game. Can they seal the deal? They're still losing a lot of HP, but it was all the control that they needed. My favorite part of that is Cali Trolls. As soon as he malfights ult back at <laughs> everybody, he just throws his hands up. He's still alive. That's it. He's just sitting there with That's no game. hands on the keyboard. That's GG. Right? <laughs> That's, my job is done. <laughs> All right, so let's get back into the action with the rematch between Teammate and Team Impulse. So Teammate had a win against Coast last week, and it was thanks in large part to Slushy, who had a great game on LeBlanc. Yeah, I mean, he even got a kill when he fed Chris to the Krugs as well for extra style points. You know, and while Cali Trolls is the player that the team usually looks to to carry, the team has actually been finding success when Slushy steps up. We've seen him carry games on LeBlanc and Oriana. Now, they are sharing 8th place, though. So this may be the point where Team 8 start dipping into that deep champion pool that we've heard so much about right. and try and use some of those more out-of-the-box picks that they've run I'd in like the past. So it's a tactic that Team Impulse tried last week when they surprised Gravity with a support-style comp, and they made it work, which was very surprising. I was really impressed by that. Team Impulse, they chose a strategy that required the team to group together and build an early lead yeah. or risk getting outscaled in the late game, and it paid off. Xiaoi Xiao went 6-0-4 as Lulu. Impact had 100% kill participation with the top lane Morgana. And previously, we had seen them building champion compositions around just individual plays, individual strengths, right. but they've really come together. This new tactic underscored that Impulse is developing a stronger team chemistry, and they're getting more and more opportunities to play together. They're coming together much more. That's right. So let's get into the game with a quick roster rundown. On the blue side, it's going to be Team 8. That means it's Cali Trolls in the top lane, Porpoise in the jungle, Slushy in mid, Maple Street at AD carry, and Dodo at support. And on the red side, it's Team Impulse up top impact in the jungle rush. Mid, Xiao is Xiao, AD carry Apollo, support Adrian. And I feel like when you, you said that about Impulse is that they kind of had like phases, what they do, how they build their champion, sometimes individual. They also had a period or a few games where Xiao is Xiao would kind of be like, I'm going to play this. That's, that's what we're going to round out the composition with. And it, you could kind of see it in the team, it was, whereas they were like, well, really? All right, let's try it. And then it was almost like chaos throughout the game. And we even heard last split when we had Xiao Wei Xiao playing on LMQ, when they picked that Pantheon into the composition, he was vocal about it. And he said, we're not going to do that anymore. We won't pick champions that we didn't practice. And I think that's what we have now been seeing from Impulse is they're bringing out what they've been practicing and it's really starting to show a lot stronger for them. Yeah, that's one of the things that bringing in coaches was supposed to help is the last minute yeah, champion right. selection changes. So we'll see if Impulse can stick to the plan this time around. See Coach Fly right behind Xiao Wei Xiao getting ready to get the team into champion select. Not sure, now you have to realize, not everybody takes champion select like Cloud9 does, and they put everything on their coach. I'm sure that'd be nice. A lot of players would like to say, we put all of the blame on the coach if it goes wrong, but I'm sure a lot of these guys also want to have good communications with the team and also their say. We can see Rush getting his microphone fixed there. Fly, he's getting everything prepped. He's a good coach. Yes, indeed. It's pretty hot in here as well. I can't believe they're still wearing their sweatshirts. <laughs> Usually it's really cold in the studios. But today, it is true. Turned up the heat. Yeah, you don't see any hand warmers. Not mm -hmm. today. The heat is definitely up. Let's see if these guys can heat it up a little bit more. Impulse with a win back in week two. They had a Nar, LeBlanc, Lee Sin, Kogma, Nami composition. Really one of the only Namis that we've been seeing. That was from Adrian. Mm -hmm. He's been spicing it up a little bit. Yeah, we'll see. I'm interested to see what uh, Impulse go with this time around because Team 8's one of the teams that really pride themselves on the teamwork in that mid-game and yeah. late game. So if uh, Impulse really want to test their 5-on-5 five -five capabilities, and they can go with a similar style. We'll see. Like you said, those pocket picks, something we haven't seen. LeBlanc was actually something that the team 
most mid laners can play, and the team knew he could play at mid lane, but they didn't know he could play it that well mid lane. They were actually <laughs> surprised that he played it that well and he was making plays. So, Slushy's LeBlanc is definitely something that wants to be on the board for Team 8, I'm sure. Impulse, yeah. Impulse figured that one out and did their homework. They'll be banning that out. Slushy, like we said, also on Oriana, he had great shockwaves against finding that win versus Team Solo mid. And if it's not him, it really looks like it has to be Cali Trolls for the carry sometimes. And then the strength of Apollo on, or not Apollo, I'm sorry, the strength of Maple at AD carry. Hopefully finishing up on Graves. Yeah, and you know, speaking of teammate, um, Cali Trolls, how everyone coming into this season, everyone was like looking at him to be this big carry from the top lane yeah. and lead the team. He's actually led them down uh, the wrong path several times in a, in a lot of the recent <laughs> games. Um, he does. He He's tries, been vocal about that. He too. tries. Re, yeah, he tries really hard to make plays for the team. Um, that can get you into trouble. Yeah, can get you into trouble sometimes. All right, have they finally fixed the problems? Looks like we are headed into Champion Select. Getting it all yeah. sorted out. These guys are ready and raring to go. You can hear the crowd. They are ready as well. And we'll see what the coaches and the teams have pit against each other here in game two. Lissandra Morgana will get banned. A few of those lockdown champions. The Rumbles also seeing quite a few bans here, especially against Impact. Going to be very good at that in the top lane. So he pretty much gets two bans towards him here to start this one off. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they've had, he's been really uh, outspoken about using that top lane Morgana. And he, one of the big things he said why he used it was because of the surprise factor. Yeah, nobody had. Yeah. The surprise factor <laughs> is gone. Why not? So Impact focused with two bands here. Now he has, as well, risen up the solo queue ladder really quickly since coming over. I think he's up at like number three right now in North American Challenger. Doesn't suck. And he's only been, yeah, he's only been here for a few weeks. Impressive. Very. <laughs> Sivir, like we said, Lissandra, banning that out against Maple Street. Haven't actually seen him take that too many times. Maybe three or four. Yeah, the Lulu actually, as well, I think, can be considered an impact ban uh, because he has used it in the top lane. But yeah. as we mentioned, Xiao Xiao was the one uh, at the helm there yep. last week with the Lulu. Haven't been not impressed, but I'm not liking the Lulus in the mid lane. It always <laughs> really? the, the kills are walking away with like 100 HP. You'll see it in all the highlights yeah. all over the place. Xiao Xiao was able to lock it down. He was able to find those kills when they got ahead. But the killers in the mid lane, those assassins. That's what so, I like to see. Yeah, well, top lane, though, is the thing that's getting focused right now. We got so many top lane bans. Nar, is, Nar and Maokai are really the two that are left up right now. So big tanks Maybe probably Cali, Cali, Cali in Jax. the cards here for both teams coming from the top lane. I'm saying there could be a Cali Jax, but it's a Rek'Sai. I actually thought that was Jax at first. I was going to go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is not. He is a she, and Rek'Sai will get picked up by teammate to start this one off. They said that Maokai would probably be floating around in this game, and it may be a Corky as well for Apollo. Yeah, Maokai the more reliable, of course, we've already been over, of the top lane tanks there. Uh, so jumping on that pick really quickly, and the Corky really high priority. Everyone nowadays really, really wants to work with a lot of mid game. So Corky, uh, pretty big focus as of late. LeBlanc is possibly pickable here. They did hover on it. I wouldn't see why they'd give it over. Xiao Wei Xiao definitely loves himself some LeBlanc. Let's see what the coach has to say. Matt Schmeider for Team 8. Calling out some shots. Graves has been a big pickup for Maple Street. He's able to really clean up fights with this. We don't know him to be one to kind of quick draw into a fight. Be the one to make plays like a forgiven, but he does not have a position on the outside of the fight. If he's had a good game, he'll get those cleanups. It's also a really good champion for teammate style where they like to have those five versus five and have a big burst. He's got a lot of area of effect damage as far as AD carries are concerned. This is probably a top lane fizz, probably for Cali Trolls. Yeah. Uh, we've already seen Quas use it up there, the AD build, uh, and try and bully some of the more squishy top laners. We'll see if Fizz can have the same effect against Maokai. A lot of that will depend on the level one early starts as well. We'll see if teammate put any effort into stopping Maokai as far as a level one camp is concerned. Vagar did get through the ban phase. Uh, an extremely powerful support right now. A lot of zone control. 
Haven't been seeing too much Janna through the past few days, but we do get ourselves a Janna locked in. Mm, I and really, Jarvis. I really like Janna now versus the AD Fizz because AD Fizz takes a lot longer to kill someone. AD Fizz is not the same as right. the old AP Bursty, just blow up one target before Janna can react. AD Fizz is a bruiser in the back line that takes a while to get his work done. So it Janna is effective peel for Corky in this scenario. Keeping Apollo safe. He'll also have his Valkyrie to get away, but the extra shield damage and Monsoon will help for sure. Seeing what Team 8 will round this out with. Definitely getting calls from Matt on the headset from the coach. He is having a last say in this, looking down the line towards Maple Street and Dodo. They're having some fun hovers as they look at the composition of Impulse. What are we seeing here, and what kind of you think would be a good pick? I think they might need some uh, some more sustained damage here for teammate. Looks like they are going to take away the LeBlanc, though, from Xiaowei Xiao. Cassidin is still up. We have not moved into the new patch where his Rift Walk, was ta the range was taken down so significantly. Uh, so Cassidin, viable. Uh, matchup here versus LeBlanc in the mid lane for Xiaowei Xiao still available. We've seen him though, you know, pull out so many different champions in the mid lane. This would add a lot I'm more ready poke. For it. <laughs> this would double down on their quirky mid game poke because even with just, you know, one item, um, Nidalee can bring a lot of pressure in the mid game. Sieges, try and get the first and second rings. Second rain is obviously much more difficult with the shields. And double AD once again could be what the deal is. He played this back in week four versus Winter Fox. Ah, so they want to prey on the fact that teammate don't have very easy wave clear. So this mid game spike of the double ADs, they want to start knocking down turrets. Uh, pretty good job of Team Impulse waiting till their last pick, utilizing this red side counter pick opportunity and team eight they all of their wave clear really yep. forces them to put those champions in vulnerable positions fizz and leblanc have to get right next to the minions to use their aoe on wave clear so it's going to be a lot up to maple street and he might go with the static shiv instead of the uh ghost blade as to help them a lot of supplement a little go. bit of wave clear coming in for team eight we'll have to see Champions are locked and loaded. We're about to get ready to get on to the rift. We'll see if Impulse can get another win. Teammate is looking to tie this one up and get some revenge. We're in the second half of the split. It's got to happen now. Coach's final words here for Matt. We'll meet up with Fly in the middle. And we're about to get underway. These guys have been waiting to play all morning long. And they are about to get into the matchup. Make sure you guys get yourself over to Twitter and get the votes going down. Prediction at tweeting at LOL Esports and use the hashtag Team 8 win or hashtag TIP win. And we'll update the poll shortly and throughout the game. Remember, you can vote more than once and we'll keep that coming up throughout the game as well. The crowd is ready. We are ready. Hi, everyone. How's it going? And we're about to get into this match. It's Team 8 versus Team Impulse. And we are going to be on the rift. All right. Yeah, I really, uh, I think that Team Impulse have the advantage as far as coming out of the pick band space here. Uh, team 8, they do have assassination potential, but their hard CC is really hard to get off. Um, and it's going to be difficult for them to get through this Maokai front line. That's right. And Team 8 put a lot of stock in Cali Trolls for Team Impulse. They say it's the mid laner who is the real threat. I think the player to watch out for is Slushy. He's like the real card. That Cali's like okay, but like Slushy is like the really consistent one that has the most pull on the team. He, he's a very solid mid laner. He has like a really strong pull and like he can make plays. Like he's always doing the right thing at the right time. Well, he did get the LeBlanc again and had a lot of success yeah. on that versus Man Cloud. However, Shao is Shao with the Ezreal, a much more difficult matchup here than previously experienced by now, Slushy. Now, knowing that things sound like they're going to go well for the composition Impulse put together, what could go wrong for them if they fail to kind of achieve their goal? What could go wrong is Slushy and Kali get fed early yeah. and can assassinate AD carries before Impulse are grouping up with Janna and before they can set up their front line. Uh, Kali Trolls on Fizz does have the potential to bully 
the lane versus Maokai and get ahead and try and utilize a split push with the Fizz. And this mm -hmm. is, you know, this may be one of those games where teammate do have a big presence from Cali Trolls and he can take over the game. Big spike there for Fizz once he gets a Trinity Force. Uh, so we'll have to watch that as well. Also, as we saw last week, LeBlanc, Slushy can take over a game and yeah. start roaming around. We'll see how quick he gets to doing that. Xiao Wei Xiao may be, able to, may be able to follow just as fast if they do start that rotation. We'll also keep an eye on Xiao Wei Xiao's farm to see if that puts him over Slushy. A little bit of roam still coming in from Adrian. He's going to get some more wards in to keep this 2v1 extra safe for the time being. Yeah, interesting deep wards here. Mm -hmm. uh, since they started on their own red side, they're going to continue the double jungle. And it looks like both sides are freezing right now. So it should be a calm dub double jungle for both sides. Pretty much exactly mirrored. Teammate actually on the bottom side have lost control of their freeze, so they're going to start pushing now. Uh, so teammate are going to look for earlier tower damage, whereas Impulse are keeping the wave frozen up top, and it's pushing against Apollo. Uh, teammate here, they're going to press up and try and get the turret down early. See if they can get some more deep wards in. That also puts them a closer to Porpoise here, so they could have helped him, and he can also now help them get a little bit of damage on the turret if necessary. Cali Trolls. Also hanging out. Looks like they're just going to do this one safely without showing too many people as well. I think that's big here. But they actually did see Porpoise. They got the pings coming in from Impulse there. Now, Ward over Impulse the wall. has to be fairly careful as they approach this turret. Uh, stick together as a group because they have zero vision in that jungle. Even though nobody from teammate is waiting there, the possibility is there. So they have to be very careful. You can see they're trying to ward up uh, yeah. as they move in and keep everybody as a three-man group to try and get in under this turret. Half damage was taken off uh, of that turret in that time, though. Meanwhile, up top, Apollo still managing the frozen wave, pruning it nicely in front of his turret. Woo! Hot tamales. Shall we? Shall we? Not liking that. He has full consumables, so he's good. He can just tip him back. Oh, yeah. He, he actually did not go for the Doran's Blade start. Mm -hmm. uh, and he can go for the spamming abilities on the wave to try and shove. Just as they die. Watching him farm is incredible. Getting good shots there. Mystic shots. Trading back and forth. They keep it pretty even in the mid lane. 30 to 28. And we'll see... Rush did spend a little bit of time down in the bottom lane, and he didn't get much out of his bottom jungle because Porpoise had just taken it. So he's back to the top side now, and Porpoise kind of knows where he is. Also, the big difference here mm -hmm. is that because of the shove down bottom, Maple Street did not get nearly as, mess, as many last hits as Apollo. Um, and because they were not able to take the turret all the way down, he's really behind in the matchup, just going to the lane. However, Apollo hasn't gone back to base to buy. So, as far as combat effectiveness in that lane... Slushy dodging the flag and drag, but does he have enough to stay in with the rest of the team? That's going to be a nice kill coming up from Slushy. Can they hit Xiao Wei Xiao as well? The pop-up happened as the arcane shifted, but he is going to be able to get out, and Xiao Wei Xiao wants to trade back as much as possible. They called Dodo off of that as well. Yeah, right as the lanes go back to normal setup, we get a counter gank in the mid lane. Porpoise Pop comes up big, and they're already setting up Slushy to succeed once again. First blood yep. for the LeBlanc. Now Xiaoi Xiao is really going to have to worry about that assassination from Slushy just in lane. And we'll see what Slushy can do with this if he starts to roam up and down, because they've already established really good mm -hmm. deep vision control during the lane swap, uh, teammate that is, inside the yep. red buff jungle of Impulse. So they have the vision to work with. Nice catch, the trade back. Foss Bomb actually hits both of them, which trades nicely in the damage. Orpus actually on the, the wing here, but he was seen out, so they may not be able to get the full kill they want. Yeah, and remember, Apollo still hasn't bought yet. The extra Doran's Blade there, even though he was uh, leveled down, Maple Street able to get a good chunk. And now they want to pressure a second turret. 
Nicely done. Now these are not just for the annoyance factor. You gain a lot of pressure in the early game by stopping the recalls on especially side lane players. Delaying the back from Apollo is huge, and Porpus just earned his team plenty of pressure up Look top. at this, he's level 4 to a level 5, and they just have so much control over what's happening, they can easily do this. They even force out the teleport in here yeah. from Impact up to try and save that top lane and soak up some of the experience. Swap back down bottom there for Corky. Good movements by teammate. Hopefully they can keep it up. They don't get themselves in too much of a crazy position. You can see Porpoise talking to QC, getting everything righted up. So great early game from him. This lane swap back, seeing that they matched up. The pressure could have been mid lane. He read that gank coming in from Rush on Jarvan. Able to get the first blood over onto him. Nicely done. See what he can work with that. He did get the assist there, and they got the kill to Slushy. That's what the point was, that they get him going again on the block. So going to be tough for Impulse to react. We'll see if they can put anything into their favor and possibly the next dragon fight. Yeah, I mean, in that gank as well, um, Rush came from their weak side. Mm -hmm. um, so going past the ward, and it was just a really good job of Porpoise Pops getting in position for the counter gank. If Jarvin uses EQ to get into lane and doesn't even land, and right. that two versus two is easily going to go to the counter ganker. So really good... Uh, Early game here, start for Team 8. And we'll see what Slushy can do with it if he gets to start roaming on that LeBlanc to try and influence side lanes. Just waiting on uh, Porpoise's mouse fix. Not feeling as smooth as it could, so we're going to get that fixed up so we can get back in a game. You know how odd it feels when you're just not clicking correctly. It's a little frustrating. Mouse, uh, probably one of the most important tools. Yeah. Absolutely. Technically, you can play the game with just a mouse, although I do not advise it. <laughs> Got to get the APM up, baby. All the points. So a win for teammate here would put them five and six on the split, which is very nicely sitting in the middle. A lot of teams are trying to break yeah. out of that pack, so it puts them in the running for a lot of things. Yeah, all the teams that are tied for fourth, fourth place right now are all mm -hmm. sitting at five and five, so very, very close. Teammate could move up within striking distance. Not a problem. They have the playmakers. They have apparently a few things we haven't seen from them. Obviously, we saw, a said, Quas playing the Fizz, but we'll see how they work it here. Looks like we may be just about ready to get back into game shortly as they get Porpoise fixed up. Callie waving <laughs> to the fans, taking a bit of time to themselves. Now, obviously, they can't talk, but they can still enjoy themselves. Yes, they can. <laughs> as can the crowd. Nice calm start to the weekend here, actually, for LCS. Yeah. Very calm opening to the last game, and this game as well. Absolutely. So we'll see if Impulse can kind of react to this. With the double AD comp, they took a hit on Rush. What's Rush's next goal? He's been kind of just hit in the jungle constantly. What's his safest bet to do next? Is uh, he kind of camp lane or just farm his face? Well, off? the thing is, he's. I think the next bet is he's definitely got to get Raptor buff before he goes for a gank. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, so sense. that he knows if he's, if he's walking over some some wards and he's going to get counter ganked like that. Uh, Raptor buff, probably the most important of these small camp buffs for junglers to grab. There's one of the hand warmers. Slushy's still working it. Especially when playing LeBlanc, you got to keep, uh, keep your fingers ready for that combo. Without the silence, you got to be much, much quicker than before. Looks like we got the confirmation. That's the head nod. The all affirming, affirming head nod. Man, well, now I have to go to the bathroom, though. <laughs> <laughs> Just go, Kobe. Just go. Drinking a lot of water. It's so hot. There's Cali Trolls, the man on Fizz this game. I'm looking to do a little bit of carrying for the team. Was that a wink? I think he just subliminally winked at us. <laughs> Something's fishy there. Ha 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 ha. I get it. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're sending over to Freak now for some extra <laughs> Fizz puns. See, but I like the laughs. I don't enjoy when people moan. That's the thing. They don't fuel me. All right, so we are going to be back into this one, Porpoise. I'll write it in the mouse environment. We're good to go. Shall we shout? An extra five gold, banking it on the void tunnels of Porpoise Pop so he can't get back. 
We're actually only level six on Slushy and Xiao Wei Xiao right now, so the roam could be from them. Everybody else is still looking to level up here. Yep, now you're going to see him play extraordinarily safe. LeBlanc coming back in, always threatening the minion line, but Xiao Wei Xiao should be able to see us pretty easily using his Mystic Shot. Really, though, I want to watch that top lane because they've switched back once again. It is going to be the heads up Fizz versus Maokai. And right now, Kali's really far behind in CS. Um, and the wave is pushing towards yeah. Impact. So, Impact, he's really not worried about this matchup anymore. And it doesn't look like we're going to get to the point where Fizz becomes a scary split pushing threat uh, because he's had trouble gaining. Uh, foothold really early on here. Yep. I don't think Impact is ever going to get to the point where he's, you know, too worried about this. Whereas Kali, um, if a Jarvan does come by, Maokai's great at setting up games. So uh, we'll see how that how he fares up in the top lane. Yeah, Plenty of sustain for both at the moment, though. It'll be interesting. Kali trolls on Fizz. He definitely can be a magician in escaping, so he can get out. Almost letting Rush die. Good guy, shall we shall. So Rush, not going to be ganking anytime soon, but all of his lanes are pushed, so it would actually be a nice time for him to get in. Porpoise, back out with the farm alarm. Looks like he's going to be assisting Slushy with something. And nope, they cancel their gank. Yeah. So Slushy, he was roaming up top, mm -hmm. trying to make use of the, the early pressure with LeBlanc. However, runs into a pink ward, so even though he does get the pink ward clear for his troubles, no roam to speak of, and we return to regular laning phase. The other thing is that top lane ward just ran out for Kali Trolls up top, and currently Rush is sitting up there. And we'll see if they actually try and take advantage of it though. Rek'Sai also hovering in the area. And this is pure game sense from Porpoise. They haven't seen uh, Jarvan recently. He just knows that his laner is pushed up. He's going to support. They still know. Porpoise is going to take a bit of a detour on this one. Rush misses the flag and drag. But Porpoise unburrows not with an attack either. Right. So both of them missing their knockups there. And uh, they agree. Little... Gentlemen's agreement. We're going to circle back around here. Next time. Next time. That was warm up. They're comes getting in, it calibrated. That ward's still going to see them coming up. So Slushy now in a second roam. He is down in CS. So this means Xiaowei Xiao is going to get even more higher in CS 92 to 79 also could get some damage on the turret and again nothing comes out of that roam. Yeah two failed roams and Jarvan didn't leave top lane so after the failed gank there's still pressure up on top uh, for Kali Trolls here. Rush has actually snuck into the side brush here trying to wrap around for a gank. So it's an advance to set it up. A little bit late. Oh! Gonna oh! get one last one, gets the Q out, can he hit it? No, Kelly Trolls is gonna live. Porpoise with a nice save. Oh, true shot, Barrage just in front of Kelly Trolls as he stops short. Good guess right there. If Kelly would have kept walking, yeah, he would have had a kill. But it's not gonna, not to be had for Shao Shao. He's gonna have to settle just for minions right now. And continue to farm in that mid lane versus Slushy. Stacking up his tier, trying to get to his mid-game spike. The Ezreal in the early game is all about just farming. So, Xiaowei Xiao, perfect type of champion for yeah, him. Just sounds like him. Farm till he gets big Trinity Force boost and his Muramana completion, at which point he, trans he goes Super Saiyan, transforms yeah. into a huge, huge threat. I bet you Xiaowei Xiao got really sad when the junglers were like, please don't take Raptors. It's actually important now. <laughs> we know that's the favorite one to take. We always see him going up and taking when they were Wraiths. But no longer, he finds his farm somewhere else. And somehow, still, top in the game, just over Maple Street here. Hasn't been doing too shabby in their lane. We did see that they pushed it earlier. It fell behind a little bit, but he's caught up now in the 2v2. Void yep. Rush just out to the bottom lane here for Porpoise. We may see him come down, but I think the disengage would just keep Impulse safe. He may give it a try, though. Here he comes. Coming through the pink ward. He's um, gone. Anytime you want to work through the pink ward. Now, well, the reason we're seeing so much, so such passive play in the bottom line, we have mm -hmm. both defensive supports down here for yeah. uh, for both duos. So neither of them really going to go aggressive unless you land a long range bubble, uh, which is fairly hard to set up. You're going to have to start trading auto attacks, maybe get that slow in. But 
especially with the Janna disengaged. They don't want to try and force anything. In mid lane, of course, both of them have jumps, and Chai Shadow's been playing really passively, so neither jungler with a lot of really good options uh, to gank. The place where it would have been would be if Kali wasn't behind early game and he had been playing the Fizz mm -hmm. really aggressively. Rush doing a little bit better. He has actually kept up and farm in the jungle, even though he had a hard time in the early game. Still sight stoning it to keep the team up in vision. Impact returns to the top lane. Still 91-71 here. And no rotation, but we are going to get Slushy starting to head down towards the bottom lane. He feels like he can be able to ah, take the play. And zero wards. Yeah, two pink wards for them also gives a free channel. For zero the wards on the side of Impulse here. So he runs right down through the river. Perfect positioning. And they're even calling in Rek'Sai. They could call all five members. If Rek'Sai drops a ward with his Sight Stone, they could even teleport in and go five men bottom for a double kill. But they do not. They abort they just like they're, they're going for walks together. That's all it is. It, two, two to the top, one to the bottom. It, it's because everybody on Impulse is playing so defensively right now. They're actually really coordinated in oh. their defensive lane play. Xiao Xiao in the mid lane, of course, on Ezreal is going to, is going to play that way. But bottom lane is adapted to that as well. Maokai doing it just at his turret. So, all of Impulse are really content to farm up until yeah. their AD carries get those Trinity forces. I mean, Shao Wei Shao is doing a really good job with the True Shot Barrage, just saying, nope, you have to come back late, Slushy. Just every time he gets it, he's cleared it down the mid lane or shot at it at Cali Trolls once. But he's keeping that lane pushed, making sure that Slushy has something to think about on these roams. Yeah, all, this whole game is going according to Impulse's mm -hmm. game plan here. They don't want mid game skirmishes. Yeah. They're waiting until they can get those. Well, teammate does. Juicy, juicy Trinity forces. Yeah, and they've been trying. Constant roams, couple of ganks, and they got one kill for their troubles. Yeah. It was actually in the scenario where Impulse started it up. They haven't actually even started taking dragons either because their top lane was behind. Now pushing on the side of Impact in that top lane. Frozen here in the bottom. Oh, a good dodge by Apollo, also by Maple Street there. A little bit of a dosi do by the AD carries. They trade the same amount of damage. The mana in favor of Maple Street. And I just I just can't believe how this bottom lane is getting away with so few wards. Now it was rushed to come in and actually get some vision for them in the river, but they've just been farming it up. And Adrian has yet to go back for any substantial buys. See if Porbus comes flying out of the base. Yep, Void Rush is on. We see the True Shot Barrage actually go straight down the mid lane while that's happening. As Xiao Wei Xiao clears once again. He actually used his Summoner Heal very recently as well. Yeah, defensively. Yep. Uh, just protection against the all-in from LeBlanc. Yep. So Rush is the only person on Impulse oh. playing aggressively right now. And he's really got to oh! be careful with that. So two times in a row, it's Rush who makes the aggressive play and two times in a row costs his team a kill. I feel like everybody except for him is on the same game plan this time around. They're all p picking these passive lanes. They're yeah. trying to scale up. That's true. But Rush is still going really aggressive. And now, Porpoise, because he knows Rush is dead, goes for a gank up top, makes impact pay. Nom nom nom. Another kill coming in here for Team A as they go from lane to lane. Porpoise has had fantastic pressure, and he is just snowballing his lanes very nicely. Good plays all around from Team 8. Slushy gets himself another kill and definitely has pretty fantastic LeBlanc. It just looks like he's yo-yoing out all these skills without the cooldown, which means he's using it perfectly. Now it's starting to snowball here. They get two yeah. turrets after that play. Rush is really uh, a little bit of a liability. I think that he just is not on the same page with the passive mm -hmm. style that they're going for this time around. Three turrets going to get knocked down here for Team 8. And that's a huge spike in gold if they all go down this close yeah. in time. That can be some very significant purchases on the side of Team 8. Right oh. now, though, some pings towards the dragon in bottom side. Doesn't look like they will get that last turret. We know Rush to have that bit of a solo queue mentality. And he did somewhat fix that for the team. But being a tendency, it can still come back. And I think we're seeing a little bit here today. 
Maybe once the team groups, maybe once it's the all 5v5 fight and people are following him, it could come out for the better. Well, the thing is weird because he's the shot caller, right, for this team. That's so true. The, That's he's true. He's the one uh, making all the calls. Shot maybe he's down. just signing off before everybody's on the same page. This is a weird dragon for them to start as well. I mean, they did just get Trinity Force for Corky, uh, but teammate are already calling down Kali Trolls. And they have a you know, 2,000 gold advantage in the mid game. Is not to be trifled with. So, Impulse there. It's a. It's also a weird guess from Impulse to mm -hmm. think that maybe it wasn't warded because they haven't spent much of their money uh, into the vision game around the dragon either. So, right. yeah, easily scared off here by teammate. Good. Uh, good move from teammate to rotate down. Now I would probably make the call for them to pressure that bottom turret uh, since they already drew everyone down to the dragon area. But it looks like Rek'Sai at least is going to go back. We'll see if she ultimates out. Well, Team 8, they have to feel safe about any movement they make. They have wards all over the map telling them where Impulse is right now. Corpus out with the Void Rush, obviously, to keep Slushy safe in the mid lane. And that was already seen by the three wards up top. So Team 8 has a lot to work with right now. All right. So Kali Trolls finally did get his Trinity Force, though. So he definitely does have a substantial amount of burst. Even though Impact's got Frozen Heart, he's still uh, an easy target for that two-man squad if Corpus does stick around up top. It looks like he's even going to abandon stealing the red yep. buff and go for the kill instead, because they can easily clean up that red buff afterwards. So, uh, Impact's <laughs> way too far. He's he dope. throws himself into the fight, just trying to do as much damage as he can before he goes down. And he will eventually. The red buff should be teammates after this. Just playing some twisted advanced jokes on the rest of the team. Yeah, they give that one to Cali. Definitely should make him that much bigger. His Triforce is finished. Could be a pair of boots for him. Now, the only thing is that Porpoise used Rek'Sai ultimate to get back onto the field. Looks like they're going to contest it for his five, though. Nope. Rush is able to get the dragon. He and leave him! Can... That's, that's a rush move. Got to give it to him. Thumbs up for him. Saving the rest of the team. But he does go down valiantly. So they snuck the they snuck out the dragon though. Mm -hmm. Impulse were able to grab the dragon even with impact dead, um, and then they abandoned rush <laughs> inside the pit. All right, well that also will mean that this outer turret goes down. So teammate have a really strong uh, mid game gold advantage here that they can pressure with. It's up to Impulse not to lose their calm though, especially since Russ is their shot caller. Uh, they can easily salvage this game, even though it looks really bad. They're down five kills. They're down all of their outer turrets. Uh, as long as they keep their cool, they can still climb back into this game. Uh, they've got a lot of power coming, still with the Ezreal Corky. Problem is uh, that they have very little vision to work with. And Team 8 have been using their cross-map mobility really well with Porpoise. Porpoise has been super omnipresent. Zero and three. He's only missed out on two of the kills that happened. Kali trolls back to the top. Doesn't look like he'll have Porpoise this time, but the team is easily farming right now, and that's something Impulse really shouldn't be letting them do. Shao Wei Shao is up to 207, 209 CS on Apollo. He said that Apollo kind of waiting for a little bit more of a spike to use these rockets. Able to push people off turrets, kind of like Sneaky was saying, that he can zone people off. Never getting a chance here against Team A as they are spreading Impulse Thin around the map. Porpoise Void rushes to the top side. He's been putting a lot of pressure, making sure it's safe for Cali Trolls, and he can also be there for Slushy. Impact is the most vulnerable on the map right now mm -hmm. for Impulse because he doesn't have a ward towards the Tribush area. So you can see he's really hesitating to even push up this far. Uh, as he should be. Very worried about a repeat gank from Porpoise. All that t Impulse have to do is play their team fight more defensively, though. Mm -hmm. uh, they can get in, They can definitely get into trouble if Impact uh, tries to play aggressively and goes to initiate. Yeah. But if he just sits back and peels for these double AD carries, it's, it's going to be fairly difficult for teammate to get into that back line. They don't have great, reliable hard CC. Porpoise, they would pretty much just re be relying on his flash unburrow. Cali Trolls playing dangerous here, but he knows the team is also on his back, so a call coming from him will pull Porpoise 
And Slushy up towards the top side of the map. Uh, invading the jungle here. Adrian gets caught by the second ethereal chain, and that's going to be him going down the quick kill. He doesn't actually try to ult at the end, but it didn't even work. They're going to go on impact now. That's going to be another kill for Slushy. He locks it down with the chain kill for number two. Nicely done. Seven to zero now for teammate. Yeah, teammate, really good job, you know, pressing this advantage. They have a huge, huge gold advantage right now, with all, especially with all their outer turrets down. They get vision inside that red buff jungle, catch somebody as they're moving across. Ooh, dive. the turrets are not are starting to not matter anymore, Kobe. One last attack. Callie oh. Trolls should be able to get into range. He should just slip, slide, and take down Rush. That's another turret for them as well, so this is a nice spike in gold. Yeah, and this is exactly what Impulse did not want to happen. The assassins, Fizz and LeBlanc getting really fed. Another good ultimate from Porpoise. Wasn't this guy just top lane? He is everywhere. Dodo could go down. Xiao Wei Xiao finds himself a kill quickly on a roaming Dodo and actually able to get out alive. Apollo saves himself some trouble. Okay, this is the hope for Impulse. They really, really have to stop bleeding kills because they've been giving up second tier turrets, uh, which yeah. are the ones that they should be hugging. Xiao Wei Xiao. Oh, what a flash there from Sushi. Wow, Slushi reading that call, walking right out of the channel range of the True Shot Barrage, making it look easy, but it is not. They are going to pick up more kills. Adrian, didn't he just get back on the map? Team 8 is going hard right now. Yeah, just the Assassin's getting fed and playing that chaotic spread out game. This is exactly what Team 8 want. Take advantage of the opened up map after all these turrets have gone down. And even Ezreal hitting his Mega Spike Biggest power point in the game when his Mermana transforms and he's got Trinity yeah, Force. Recently. Only able to grab a support kill there. And Slushy comes in to assassinate him with a great flash, anticipating the jump over from Xiao Wei Xiao. Teammate really want to keep this snowball going. Both of the assassins at this point, though, have to start being a little bit careful about giving up bounties, uh, especially Cali Trolls. He doesn't want to give away any giant sums of gold. If they keep up the game as now, and they continue to spread out the map and just pick members of Impulse off, then they can easily just flash again. And out this Woo. game. Woo. And there's the combo. Dodging the Ezreal ultimate as well. Another one. Another pick. The replay into the real thing. Slushy and the team coming up. Dodo takes that one. The teleport's going to be right on the team, but Impact stops it, actually, and he walks into the fight. They must have called him off. It seems like it would have been good with the ultimate on, but they do not decide to take it 20 seconds on to Dragon, and that's a nice time to be taking Rush down. Hey, fun to watch. Assassin's fed, and they get another pick here. We said it would be a scary thing if it, what Impulse could fall into, and it's when Slushy, when Cali Trolls get fed, that means you just have 80 carries to be taken out and popped off the map instantly. <laughs> yep. So the Dragon spawning up. Seems like he wants to party. Nobody's going to be there. Yeah, teammate, they don't have to rush into this one. Um, they can easily go back to base yeah. and heal up and get that vision down because it's really dangerous, as we've seen for Impulse, to walk through the jungle. Anybody gets picked off, they immediately are executed. They do have a decent amount of poke. If they're able to set up a secure five on five and land some poke, poke before the fight starts out and have their front line play to... Whoa! <laughs> All right, if they're just going to turtle under turrets, the words then out teammate of my mouth. are going to jump on Baron here. Well, look at there's almost zero vision on the top side. Actually, there is zero vision here for Impulse. They have everything towards the bottom of Pink Ward all the oh, way he's down. Coming in the for a hero rush. steal. Rush, could he make it happen? No, he cannot, and he's going to pay for it with his life. A few rockets from the outside. And some breadcrumbs thrown in from the rest of Impulse, but Baron goes over to Team 8, and now they can do pretty much anything they want. And they could before. Yeah, it's a huge key for them, because the Assassin teams usually have trouble knocking down the later stages of turrets, but they are so far ahead, yeah. and with Baron buff, they can just brute force bully Impulse off of those later turrets and shove in now. It's like Freak was saying, you don't usually poke a turret down, you poke down the team that's around the turret, and that's exactly what teammate can do here. Not really poke, they're going to be sieging and crushing you down immediately. So, Impulse has to be very aware of their positioning as they approach these fights, or even approach guarding their own objectives. 28 minutes coming up on the clock, four turrets here for teammate. They have seven more to drop on the map. They don't have to do all of it, maybe down the mid lane, who knows. We'll find out. Choose your own adventure book coming up.
It's 12 to 2 right now on the kill board. Looks like Cali Trolls will be able to save this turret. Teammate, they only lost that bottom lane. So with their mid lane still being up, they have so much map uh, control. They're just working it, pushing the wards forward constantly and guarding them. Yep, well, with the assassins, what you want to do is split push when you have Baron buff so you can mm -hmm. get an extra line of Baron up minions because nobody can one versus one Cali. Uh, and he could bring a lot of pressure up to the top side. It looks like Rek'Sai trying to get some vision for him to get the split push going deep inside the jungle. Um, so they can push two lanes in and force Impulse to make a choice. Right now Corpus feels strong enough oh, to just toy like they with might them. dive. Shao Shao showed himself in the bottom lane. That's exactly what we saw last game with Mash showing himself off on the side. It gave the team Clay Cloud 9 enough to engage on a second tier turret. Almost seeing the same thing pan out here. Xiao Wei Xiao will be able to get back in time. True Shot Barrage to clear the bottom wave. He just used it. So it'll be auto attacking the heck, or rather, casting spells on these minions to get them oh. back up quick. If they go when Maokai's not here. A little back and forth. Cali Trolls trying to deter the team and grab their attention there on the back side of the turret. Maple Street able to get shots on. Slushy in and oh! out. Oh! the waters onto Apollo. He's forced out. It's not going to do a whole lot of damage if Cali can't follow up, but it's enough for them to take the turret and gain control of that inner area of hit or Sniper place. shot through everyone to land the fish. Now, since the rework, it's not going to be a huge damage uh, yeah. with the ultimate. Right. However, Slushy constantly with the combos. Got to be careful, though. He could get himself taken down. Obviously, they're going to go crazy. Everyone goes crazy for clone, but Slushy's on the other side of the wall. He's safe. Almost getting rushed. He wanted the double distortion there. Wanted to play with Porpoise. They could get themselves into a scary situation here. They're going a little too hard, but with a bit of safety on the edge, if you will. Yeah. They do stay safe. Thing here is that Impulse don't really have a lot of tools to force their combat. They, they are not the ones who get to decide if they come back now. They have to play defensively and hope that teammate yeah. make a mistake, and then they can come back. Well, a few mistakes could probably be made at this point by teammate. Right now, they're looking to not make any. Maple Street and Dodo, power in numbers. There's that split push going down by Slushy, or at least the wave clear before he rejoins with the team around River. 12 to 2. Five turrets to one. Yep. And they're still going to give up position on the mid turret, so that's a small win for Impulse. One step on their road back to a comeback. Oh, man. Callie's got to be careful not to overextend here. A little bit. Kelly Trolls bringing out those tendencies of his own, but the team's able to come back up and help out. I figured one of these would be a teleport to a ward behind them, and they were going to pinch the fight in. But they decide to take it face to face, and Impulse is able to retreat from that one. Yep. Extra speed from Janna. Frontline playing defensively and trying to peel exactly as they should. Good disengage there from Impulse. And teammate well, oh. just not in position to catch that one. So they're able to strike and get one one extra turret down for a little bit more of Global Gold to get back in this. Yeah. But still going to be a very, very rough defense here for Impulse. Kapalo and Xiao Wei Xiao have finished up their Bloodthirsters to stay a little bit healthier in these fights. Hopefully they don't get burst out immediately now that they have a bit of a shield to work with. We're also seeing that Xiao Wei Xiao's blue is being consistently stolen here, which is going to hurt Xiao his damage quite a bit in these fights. Yeah, Slushy constantly getting blue, mm -hmm. using it to pull off LeBlanc combos under turret, harassing down either of the AD carries. Uh, and they have to be careful of that as well, because Maple on the Graves can follow up with some long-range burst damage, or Kali can dive a turret you know, and hop back out. So every time Slushy goes in for a combo, the AD carries have to be really careful, and they might you might see them popping their heels really, really quickly uh, in reaction to one of those combos because they do not want to get 100 percent of with the Graves follow-up. Whoa! Ooh, a little too far back, but that's a huge pop there going on to Slushy. He gets taken down, not to necessarily a shutdown because he was killed before, but the rest of the team has to be careful for the damage. That's going to be Maple Street as well. Rush goes in hard, but can the team follow? Apollo coming in, we see him from the channel of the jungle, but will he be able to get there in time? Porpoise is very big. 
and we're now seeing Team 8 have to run from this fight. Kali Trolls dives in. Dodo's gonna go down. Kali will as well. Who will be the focus of getting these kills, though? It'd be great to have them on Apollo, but I don't know if they're gonna be able to finish any more. Team 8 saves one, two of their members. But that was a scary situation to be seen from them this far ahead in the game. Yeah, that's why we keep cautioning against making mistakes against this team that's got their double Trinity forces. Their man immune transformed already. We can see how much ridiculous damage Xiao Xiao is putting out right now. Uh, Bloodthirster for both of those AD carries as well. So Corky and Ezreal are turning almost into ranged bruisers here with these very we'll see it again. Trinity force and Bloodthirster combos. And that was just Slushy going for another uh, LeBlanc combo. A little too sure of them. When Maokai is there for the peel, this is the defensive Maokai that we were looking for. Even though he does go down, Xiao Xiao doesn't let them get away with this. Uh, he's on his three items. Ooh. Huge, huge burst. And Rush finally gets to make the aggressive play, finishing off the dunk. Once again, this is only one of their AD carries. They also have Apollo coming back yeah. in this whole time. So he's able to flash forward in this fight because the front line is non-existent. Well, we see what Impulse can do with just a bit of their squad if organized correctly in these fights. Teammate quickly out to Baron to make sure that Impulse doesn't get any ground on that as well. If they can start getting these turrets down, Impulse, they do see a lot of gold in their eyes here with those outer turrets in the one up top. So if they get that, it could be a big spike for them still. Yeah. It's almost time to start hyping up, you know, comeback potential here for Impulse. Yeah, Apollo's got the, the Wrath Elixir. He's ready. He wants it. They're going for endgame stuff. Yeah. Uh, armor stacking is a, is a pretty big worry for Impulse. Uh, Porpoise, well on his way. Already got a Randuance completed. Let's see if he does go Whoa! Well soon. Porpoise diving into the entire team, thinking the Nami ult maybe would be closer. Rush, he gets bubbled in. A great hit from Dodo, and they start to clean up. Kaylee Trolls gets the first one. He gets himself out, but no, he goes down to the hands of Apollo. And now teammate again. Quick draw and <laughs> flashing out. Buff. Dip, dodge, and doing everything they can. But Impulse has their number. Slushy comes in and completely zeroes out Apollo. Do they have enough damage to follow up again? Dodo waiting on cooldowns. Slushy waiting on cooldowns as well. And they're going to have to head for the hills as Impulse is going to have for Baron. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Xiao Xiao didn't want to go for the last auto attack onto Dodo because he wasn't quite sure if Slushy's cooldowns were back up mm -hmm. and he want to get bursted. But that was very close to Impulse once again coming out huge victors in the fight. The double AD carries with their Trinity Force and Bloodthirster. Yeah. Really, really difficult to take down. So look, look at the initiation so here. So far ahead. Now, exactly. He's tanking this whole time with very little damage to being done. Maple already blew his full combo. Then it's Rush that jumps in, and he's actually the target for Slushy, the initial target. Mainly, it's just everybody worrying who Slushy's next target is. Le LeBlanc right now is yeah. pretty much the biggest threat on Team 8. And if they work around the LeBlanc, oh, who almost died there in the exchange, <laughs> um, then Impulse, they're clawing their way right back into this one on the back of that Corky and Ezreal. This is actually where it becomes hard, too, for Team 8 because you start to hesitate on the fights you want to take. And fights almost become harder. When that starts to happen, things really turn chaotic. Slushy does have his Zanyas now, so he can play. He That's can go good. for those aggressive assassinations, kind of pause the which fight. is key because he has to be the one yep. to finish off one of those AD carries. Uh, Maple Street, we saw there on the outside trying to help out, but after he blew his Graves combo, Know, wasn't able to get much. He does get sort of outranged by the Mystic Shot and Missile Spam. It's actually pretty risky here with the teleport being down from Cali Trolls. They're kind of playing with fire at this point. But Impulse does not know that. They don't have the window on his timer, so they're easily able to split these lanes without worry and telling the team if anything happens, kite the fight. Yeah. Looks like they'll stay safe. Also, the other big thing to keep track of is the exhaust on Impulse. Adrian has both summoners available right now, and it's his job to keep both of those AD carries alive. So the assassination for Kali and Slushy becomes that Almost. much more important. No, Teleport dodging burgers. out, nobody getting wet socks on that one, but Adrian is very, very low using ultimate and both summoners, so that exhaust we were just talking about is now unavailable for them to use in these fights. It's gonna be a pretty big cooldown. 
Vision also is going to be extremely important for Impulse to try and fight over here. As once again, they don't want to get caught out inside their own jungle. Oh, I don't think they have a choice. Porpoise flanking from one side, Kali from the other. And Impulse is actually forced to run the opposite direction of their base just to get to safety. Rush finally finds himself heading towards home, and Impact can finally meet him. The bubble missing from Dodo as Impact Twisted advances in. Does Team 8 want this fight? They're going to have to start walking into the poke, and it may be too much. Xiao Wei Xiao is getting off a lot of damage. Maple Street has been hit up hard here, and Impulse again fend off the lane. And notice how we end the fights always. The 280 carries from Impulse on the front line. Yeah. Yeah, looks Whoa. like they don't want to let him get away either. Shall we shout? Adrian might even try to three versus five this. Whoa! <laughs> That's what Shao Shao was thinking. That was maybe fun. a Banshees for the last item. That was his tribute to DFG. All right, looks like the Baron once again for Team Eight though. This is their key to pressing in on the last outer turrets, but they cannot Ooh. because Rush shows an explosive Kobe. Yeah, so if. Well, it looks like he got a long sword, so he's not going for Banshee's Veil, the last item here uh, for Shally Shaw. Oh, yeah, yeah. What is he going to turn that long sword into? Feel like Banshee's takes out the one way that they lose this game, which is combos from LeBlanc, though. They do have a Mikhail's. Uh, Adrian's been able to get Mikhail's, so in addition to the exhaust, he does now have other options, but the all important exhaust timer still long ways from up. to see what the next move is. Obviously, Dragon's only going to be second for teammate, third for Tip. I don't think that's going to draw too much attention from everybody with the Baron being up for now. That teleport again for Kali Trolls is down, playing with a bit of fire here as he will not be able to get with the team. And that could have been a bait there, but Slushy may have baited uh -oh. himself. Fast fingers coming in from top lane on impact. Beautiful hit on the twisted advance from Maokai. A definite error there by teammate. Yeah, Slushy's, he's trying really hard to win the game for his team mm -hmm. by himself. And that is not the way they're gonna be able to pull this off. Impulse just stuck together. They keep their front line playing defensively, peeling for their double AD carries, punishing LeBlanc for every exchange he goes for. Now the Baron for them, and they should be able to push in for an entire victory. With the strength of these AD carries, Impulse may very well shove all the way into the base with this Baron buff. First, they want to clean up Dragon uh, to get the neutral objectives off the field. Yep. But I expect them to very quickly return to the field and shove down one of the lanes. They could go in the top lane and pick up a bunch of turrets for a huge amount of global gold for the team. Just what a fantastic job again, so far. He keeps going for these assassinations while Impact is in the area. And Impact with some really good twist advances. Yeah. Just locking them up. Easy execution there for the rest of the team. Quick fingers, man. Team Impulse losing the team part of the name. Or Team 8. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Uh, Slushy going solo mode here. Yeah, we saw a very, very safe early game from them. And that's somewhat fallen to the wayside with late game decision making. Obviously, you want to make plays on your assassin. But you can't discredit the ability of the other team to the take The fame has gone to his out. head, Riv. Yeah. He got, he got <laughs> on the Telestrator last week. I got her again. Once I'm going to win the once game. Once more big plays. Feed, feeding people to Krugs. You know, I was going to say it, and I should have, but he's building a Hex Drinker. I figured he may want to try to survive a little bit of that burst. But Xiao Wei Xiao is so long sword into the Hex. That's what the long sword yeah. is. So it's not quite the Banshees. He's going the little bit more offensive route. That could be a maw by the end of the game if he still has enough time to build it up. And it looks like teammate's going to try to dictate a little bit of a mid push here to at least get some of the map freed up. They have a lot of clearing and wardage to do. This used to be all of their vision, but now they own none of it. Yeah. Well, the, the team fight from teammate now gets really, really difficult because the front line from Impulse is really imposing. Both of these assassins are going to have a very difficult time working towards the back line. And even if they get there, there's a Janna. So uh, Impulse with a much, much more straightforward team comp, really easy to execute in the 5 versus 5, whereas teammate are going to have to pull out some crazy shenanigans with some flank moves or splitting up the team uh, to, to isolate people. 
Doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. Whoa! Though. That was a flash and a half. Dodo trying to stay safe on that one. Figuring Impulse was going to get a little antsy and dive the turret. Kali trolls ahead of this one. And he's just clearing the wave because Impulse is headed top. They get pretty much whatever they want now. And after having control of the game, all early game, Impulse has weathered the storm and they now find themselves with the advantage. Still down 3,000 gold, might I add. But they are taking everything they want. Impact's gonna go in for this. A good bit of damage on the front end, but that's exactly Whoop. what the competition of teammate does. After that, they have to wait for the cooldowns, and that means they're running for the base. Yeah, they poured everything into trying to kill the tank, though, and yep. Impact has teleport, so this could very well be the end of the game. Impact probably going to teleport back in and finish. Two shot from the barrage going over, hitting Slushy nicely. And Dodo, they're going to be back to the fountain to get a little bit of heal. One inhibitor going down there, but it's not going to be long for the other ones. Shao Wei Shao, a little sun in his eyes there. Couldn't get over the wall. Yep, looks like they want to just collect everything. We mentioned all the turrets up top that they could take. They took mid ones as well. Such a rewarding push for Impulse. 28 seconds, can they finish? A rewarding game as well. They waited for so long for this to be able to happen, scaling slowly, getting their Triforces ready, and they finally found the fights they needed over Team 8. A few errors, however, from Team 8 did allow this to happen. Going a little too hard in that late game has cost them a lot of ground here. It's always something you have to keep in the back of your head when you're playing the double assassin team. If you make those missteps uh, in the mid-game, mm -hmm. it's gonna be very difficult End game five versus five. Uh, not a really imposing front line here to work with, so. Hard job for Slushy and Kali. Well, now could, now could be the time, Kobe. The vision has pretty much just faded away on the map for both teams. If teammate can get their pick at this point, it'd probably be the best, best chance. That's a good point. You know, after an extended push like that, where Impulse are in the lanes for so long, taking down all these turrets, the one hope is that there are pockets where their wards have run out on the map, and if um, Team 8 could sneak into uh, one of those pockets of Fog of War, maybe catch somebody out to try and get a chain reaction going and get back in the game. But not going to be the case this time around. No death bushes set up here. Too much lane clearing needed to be done. Impulse had a very nice map coverage, or full map coverage, I should say, after that push. Top, mid, and bottom have now been resolved by Team 8. They're up to at least River, which gives them some breathing room here to work with. They still have to be very careful. They do not want to take a full-on fight head-on. They want to take it from the side. They want to be able to flank, and this yep. might be the chance. They have to be careful, though. We saw what happened last time. Kali Trolls tried to flank around the side, yep. and they weren't ready for the full-on engage, and he just got five versus one. Here goes Porpoise, though. Porpoise goes in. Kali will be from the side here, and they see him with wards. They turn right over to Kali, and they're able to put down quite a bit of damage. Apollo finishes him off. Porpoise and the rest of the team are just about equal health as they're all trying to find Solace under the turret. That about to fall down as well, and teammate now once again runs for their base. Impulse can just not be stopped, even behind. Now actually ahead in gold, 2,000. Yep. And I just, I really like the team comps from Impulse the last two games that they've mm -hmm. played, even last week. This one, you know, really working with a double AD that actually works mid game, double Trinity Force Spike, um, with a really good peeling front line and Janna disengage. So they got so many parts uh, that came together that just really make Assassin's jobs very difficult. Right. Plus, with both of those AD carries building uh, Bloodthirsters on top of their Trinity Forces, hard targets just in general. So, Second, number four. So, Impulse now need to just sure up a bit of the seven deaths that rushes gets in the early the part. Early of the game, early game, they definitely could have played <laughs> more clean. A little, <laughs> little more. Make it squeaky clean. Maybe a few deaths less. Rush getting himself into a few sticky situations, but overall, he was able to right those wrongs. Keep yep. himself safe. Now two, seven, and six. It doesn't look pretty, but he's got enough items to really be helping the team in these engages. Baron is now alive. That's why we're seeing so much hustle and bustle here on the top part of the river. And we're about to get a fight, most likely. I think Impulse could force this one easily just with pokes. Yeah. And teammate won't be able to do anything. They, they have a really hard time here, teammate, because they have two inhibitors down. So the longer they stay out of the base, the yep. more ground they lose. Oops. And Impulse... <laughs> 
Can't decide which way to go. Righteous Glory. And Back to Baron oh. it is. Let's try to burn it down. They use Righteous Glory and Talisman of Ascension at the same time. Just kind of like a brute force tactic. Porpoise, can he get close enough? He's locked in. The Baron goes over to Shao Wei Shao on a Mystic Shot. And oh, they got to be able to take down Apollo. Maple Street right to the back of the pit. Two kills coming in for Cali Trolls. Was the Baron the wrong idea here for Impulse? As Team 8 could easily take down a turret without Tanky. They, they are going into this. The good thing for Impulse is that they got Baron, though. It looks like Rush is going to sneak around to try and counter push. With the inhibitors down, Team 8 cannot get inside and end the game because they would lose the base to Rush. Right. Here goes Rush with the Baron up super minions. Teammate straight up the middle. Could this be a five versus one split? No, Rush, Whoa. no back! Oh, he's gonna back. He just cleared the wave. The super minions are now regular minions. They're gonna they use gonna an inhibitor. With They're gonna try to end. They're going so hard. Cali Troll, they had that Triforce on him. He can still do some damage to the turret. Rush goes in. That's he has come back to try as the new challenger, but he gets pushed off. He may have done enough, however. That's a <laughs> Nexus turret down, going for Maple Street. Game They're over. on the next one. It's gonna be game over. Team 8 pull the trigger, and they take down Impulse. What in the... I don't even know what to say for this game. We need to look at that team fight one more time. That just happened at Baron. That was the intensest Maple Street I've ever seen with a shoe in his hand. So the difference in that last team fight, though, Maple Street went to the back line as well. So they went all in. Dove into the Baron pit. He went in what for assassination he... as well. Perfect. So they committed really hard to killing the back line there, even sending Graves. Woo! deep into the back line, and then win the game. Yeah, we're definitely going to need to take another look at that one. Great golly, <laughs> Miss Molly. What a game that was. High fives to the crowd. Everybody's super happy for the Team 8 fans after that win. An impulse. You can't even really call it a wrong decision. They, it seemed like they had it ahead. It was just this split decision by Team 8 to go all in, to just go for broke. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and they didn't they didn't have to, uh, Impulse didn't have to uh, force that decision either. They, no. With two inhibitors down, all right, though. It also seems like it would be easy, though, right? You know, two inhibitors down. There's enough pressure. We have the minion waves. But they also had the vision to see that Team 8 was coming. Team 8 just straight up bum-rushed them yeah. <laughs> inside that's, the pit. And they took them, took them inside the pit. Beautiful, uh, beautiful last team fight there. What a way to end a game. You cannot forget, though, there was a falter there from Team 8 in the, in the mid part of the game. They weren't able to pressure their advantage. They started to lose what they had against Impulse. And to win a game like this on kind of that shotgun style, you still have to go back and look at where your error was in the game and what made you have to get this result. I mean, the double assassins there were really, uh, really worried as they're getting towards that late game. But again, caught him in the pit unawares. And it was, it was good coordination in the last team fight as well to assassinate those high priority targets. Yep. I think Slushy, or Slushy, I always call Porpoise Slushy off the bat. Porpoise was huge in soaking up so many of those initial uh, abilities when he got into the Baron pit. I didn't even think he was going to make it. And he didn't. It went to uh, Shao Wei Shao with a Mystic Shot or an auto attack on the Muramana. But he stayed alive in that fight. He was able to go on because he was so tanky, and he kind of just knew. He was like, my team's behind me. It's that little bit that I need, and we can stop them from doing Baron. Plays like that, what well, gets you on the PTL, gets you on the Penta. We'll see if it is. Freak is on stage to get the pro's perspective on that wild back and forth match. Thanks very much, Riff. I'm here with Porpoise, the jungler from Team 8. So that was an interesting game. Uh, was the plan to give Team Impulse a lot of fantasy points before you won, or like what was what was that mid game about? Well, that was the original plan, but then we realized, you know, we need some team points for ourselves. Right at the end, there we're like, eh, we're a little bit short, so we just decided to win the game. Well, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you managed to get Baron on your side for this one. Uh, how are you thinking coming into this game? So there are a game ahead of you in the standings. We're more than halfway done with the season. You're like wandering around eighth place. You're like almost getting in there. Did this game mean anything special to you guys coming into this week? Okay, this was actually a big start to the week because we're aiming for a 2-0 this week to kind of boost ourselves back up to the top half of the ladder. And this was a big win because that kind of drags them down a little bit and boosts us up. So it's really good for our ranking in the, in the ladder. So uh, important win for us today, and we're happy.
All right, well, of course, good job on that win then. So uh, next up, I've got to ask you sort of, I guess you're going two on the week, okay. Um, Shoot, I actually lost my train of thought because you already kind of answered what the next thing is going to be about your week's goals here. Um, you saw them coming in with a double AD composition. Uh, and tell me about sort of, we've seen this be sort of more and more common in League of Legends. What is the game plan coming against this where you know that they're going to break down tanks probably better than you guys will? Uh, well, what we try to do is, is run more assassination stuff that can kind of go right by Maokai and assassinate their backline. And we kind of uh, messed up that in the mid game, so we had a lot of trouble there. We kind of got caught by the Maokai instead of us kind of engaging and going right by him. So that was a big uh, misplay on our part, and we gave him a lot more than we should have. And uh, I think that game could have been a lot cleaner, but um, yeah, we did pretty well besides that. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of dirty, but I guess you guys got the game overall. So final question for you. Tomorrow's Dignitas, you said you wanted to go 2-0 in the week. What has preparing for them been like? Uh, for Dignitas? Uh, well, we're studying their new jungler, Zingy. So we're kind of taking a big look at him because he might be a, a factor that we don't know for sure. And we know some of the champions he plays. Um, as well as just, we, we know we, we are confident against Dignitas and we can beat them. It's just we need to really focus and be on our game. All right, well, Harpers, thank you very much. Good luck. Fist bumps, come on. It's League of Legends. That's how we do it. Well, that's it for here at the interview. We're going to throw it over to you guys at the analyst desk. Thank you, Freak. And uh, I just want to take a look at that last fight again because it caught us <laughs> off guard on the analyst desk. So we're going to do that yeah. first. We're going to get this out of the way. Let's figure out how this game actually ended before we go and break it down. We're going to pull that up on your screen, and we're just going to start rolling it out right away. Yeah, we have to figure out what happened because we were all ready to crown Impulse for this fantastic comeback. So uh, uh, that's it. Maple Street gets to the Maple back Street line. Flanked. He's actually the third assassin on this fight. Uh -huh. He solos out Apollo, and then he goes into the pit and gets Xiao Wei Xiao from behind. So it wow. looked like TIP were too focused on Slushy and Cali trolls, and they forgot about Maple, who's pretty much been a non-factor this game. To be fair, as they just push through, and here, here we're also wondering whether or not Rush should have tried to just kill the Nexus. And, like, he wouldn't have had time, plus Cali Trolls had his teleport up. At the very least, we thought maybe Rush tries to do it anyway just to cause panic. But yep. once the three damage dealers were down on Impulse for no retaliation kills, the game was over. Also, the top inhibitor does respond to... So the, yeah, the that's very, that's so very true. Also have to power so unfortunate that. timing on that as well. But essentially, yeah, your hope there would be to cause panic in teammate and oh. maybe force a couple of them to back. I mean, that yeah. game, that game was nuts, right? Yeah. Because we saw teammate get out to an incredible early lead. They were up 8k at 30 minutes, 12 to 2 in kills, right? And then we watched them kind of hand the lead back. And okay. things were all evened up, if not even tipped a little bit into TIP's favor. And and then the counter, counter yeah. throw. Yes. The counter, counter throw. The let's, counter, counter throw. <laughs> let's begin at the start. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's, yes, exactly. Uh, some fantastic outplays in the mid lane by Slushy's LeBlanc. I mean, the first counter gank was so exquisite there where he dodged away from Jarvan and still landed the chain. Then he just started killing Rush again and again and made it seem like the game would just descend into total chaos. And it pretty much did. That was the teammate style. Two assassins-ish. I mean, Fizz is more of a Relia right now with right. that build. Yeah but two assassins that can go around and create small skirmish fights. And for the most part, that seemed like that should have been the game. Yeah, exactly. They had created that kind of chaos that they normally look for for the small skirmishes, which brought them to that 12-2 and two point. Mm -hmm. But then where you would normally expect that team comp to just roll over people now, you've got a big LeBlanc and a big Fizz. You should just win any team fight you find yourselves in. One would think. If you have all five people there. Yeah. <laughs> Cali Trolls like takes red buff, runs bottom, has no TP, and then Slushy gets caught out trying to assassinate an AD carry. Because that's what he's been doing all game, right? You get ahead on LeBlanc, you go for those squishy AD carries, and then he gets caught by Maokai, who just has the point and click, and they take him out. And then they just, that's how the lead actually started getting reversed too. And then Slushy goes for like Xiao Wei Xiao at one point and gets hit by impact. Like the, the point and click frontline really kind of turned that around. Because then it became frontline versus frontline. And Maokai Jarvan, a little bit better than just a solo Rek'Sai. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, two, two players that I want to point out. One we already mentioned, Slushy, uh, pulling out some great individual plays to get himself ahead. Uh, definitely one of the bright spots for Team 8. Yeah. As was mentioned, that's, uh, Adrian mentioned, that's who they look at as one of the big threats on Team 8. But mm -hmm. Porpoise. Yeah. I feel, yeah. You may, we had the interview with him, which is great, but I feel may have gone unnoticed in that game 
but 2-0-13 on Rek'Sai, and in his early game had incredible presence with that uh, counter gank in the mid lane, and also saved people multiple times by showing up for counter ganks in the top lane and things like that. Yeah, he was always present, and I think he was a big part of the frustration on Rush at the early game, because even he's like, mm -hmm. I'm down a level, down a longsword, still fighting he's him in the jungle. Bodies him at the double golems there, yeah, or the Krugs. All, the yeah, Krugs, yeah. Taking all of his pressure off the map for a huge part of the early game, which allowed the skirmisher comp to just be like, all right, even though we're down in CS, we're going to group up, push Rush out of the fight so we know that it's a one on two, and then we go in. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's pretty much how, <laughs> as far as we can go oh, yeah. with the analysis of that game, in that, ridiculous. you know, it, yes, exactly. It yeah. was a little ridiculous. Total, total chaos team composition working in the sense, mainly because Porpoise Pops, Pops got the roamers going, uh, then they start making really foolish roam decisions. Impulse starts capitalizing. We see how well their team composition works, tank lines and everything. And then at the end of the game, Maple Street turns it oh, on and that, makes the one play that just decides to win the game. That's the thing is, right, yeah. he hasn't really done a whole lot this game, but it's like that one play, even though they had all these throws and stuff, he's the one person who actually was relatively consistent on the team yeah. and then shows up big in the last fight. Yep. So if I had to give like an MVP for that, it would probably be Maple off that one thing. It's also sure. the threat of moving he, he, into those late games because of death timers. Now, we do have to mention a tweet that we got from at Awesome Rob, who's figured out our secret to a good analyst segment. He writes, something else yes has taught me. Holding a pen while talking about something makes you 20% more <laughs> factual and 20% more professional. I, I He's agree. Not wrong. That's why if, if you drop a pen, like, I would look foolish if I just had a piece of paper up yeah. here with no pen. What are you doing with that piece of paper? You can't yeah. write on that. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, Rob. You are awesome. We are going to step away, but meet us back here for Game 3, Team Liquid versus Gravity. The NALCS continues after this. Let's get back into the action with the rematch between Team A and Team Impulse. To the real thing, Slushy and the team coming up. Dodo takes that one. The teleport's gonna be right on the team. Shoot him by, shoot him by. Okay, okay, let's let's say. Okay, okay, go, 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 right side, right side. Oh, peace, 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 peace. I'm healing you, healing you. Peace, peace. Nice go, 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 go. 10 seconds on my W. Okay, it's okay. Dragon. Quick draw. <laughs> oh, flashing out. Buff. Dip, dodging, doing everything they can, but Impulse has their number. I'm Ezreal, Ezreal, Ezreal. Okay, my guys, Jarvan, 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 Jarvan. Mid, 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 mid. Team A pull the trigger and they 